Don't start architecture without understanding its purpose. I see companies start building their architecture because a consulting firm sold it as a silver bullet to all their problems, or a leader heard it at a conference, or competitors are doing it, and we should do it too, or many of the hundreds of other reasons. The problem with doing architecture without purpose is like constructing a building without first knowing what it'll be used for, a residential house, or a warehouse, or a factory, or a community center, or an airplane hangar. That's a bad way to go about creating architecture. Let's understand architecture in its very basic form. Architecture is simply a representation of reality. We often start out with the current representation of reality. When we want to transform to the future, we imagine that future, represent that architecture for the future, and then figure out how to build the reality that corresponds to that architectural representation. Architecture is a way to show how the different parts of the system fit and work together to deliver value. Some of these parts are physical and some are conceptual. For example, in a Jeep, the engine is physical, whereas its capability to drive off-road is conceptual. In a business, people are physical, while skills of these people are conceptual. So what's wrong with building out this representation of reality without knowing beforehand what the focus is? Let me give you an example. Let's say you own a big venue at the beach that you rent out for weddings and concerts. You find that people book your venue only for 25% of the time that it's available and you're losing a lot of money. Your intent is to figure out how to fill it up more. There could be many reasons for the low booking rate. Perhaps it's in a remote location with low accessibility. Perhaps your target audience is not aware of it. Perhaps it lacks food service. Perhaps it's too expensive and so on and on. Instead of looking at these options holistically, if you were to build architecture by mapping out your processes to handle clients, make food, decorate halls, etc., then those representations will not help you to get to the bottom of your problem. These process maps, as they are called, will help you optimize operations at a later time, no doubt. But you don't need to optimize your operations right now. You need to focus on something bigger, which is growth. The architecture for growth purposes is different. So don't build architecture without purpose. You can use architecture to solve many business problems. It could be used to understand how to start a new business, how to modernize systems, how to prioritize spending, including IT spend, how to position your business competitively, how to be efficient with mergers and acquisitions, and a whole lot more. If you know what the problem is, then you can focus on those components of the architecture that will get you immediate value. As you solve more and more problems, you can of course reuse much of the architecture that you created earlier when solving a different business problem. The important thing is that as you capture more and more of the reality of the business, you are understanding different levels of detail about your business. As a side note, the underlying reality will continue to change fast, especially in today's world. So don't spend too much time capturing minute details that'll be changing fast. Being able to use architecture for its purpose is more important than keeping it accurate in the details. The level of detail that you need to capture in architecture depends on the problem. If you're interested in merging with another company, then the architecture you capture would be at a high level, such as the capabilities of each organization, so you understand how much of an overlap there is. On the other hand, if you are interested in making the procurement process better in your organization, then you would capture the process around procurement and the systems that impact it so that you can make it better. Every organization is real, whether it's represented in architecture or not. Architecture does not have to exist for the business to function, but if leaders collectively understand how the business works by sharing representations and using the same language to speak, then it's easier for them to transform it. Here's an analogy. 
the continents and the national geography of the world exists, whether we choose to draw the maps for it or not. The maps, however, help people to explore the world. Without maps, we'll all have limited understanding of the world and each a different mental model. Architecture is like the map. It is the foundation for business transformation. If leaders can't create and read a map on how the business works, and there is no common language of communication, then each leader's mental model of the business will be different. It's as if each leader had his or her own map. How can they effectively and collectively drive change? Architecture for the business has many focus areas and it falls under the broad umbrella of enterprise architecture. I have a detailed video on the topic, which I will link in the description below. The main components of enterprise architecture are business architecture, application architecture, data architecture, and technology architecture. I would add one more to this list, which I call ecosystem architecture. Since in today's world, the context of your business is important to consider. A similar business operating in say Kenya will be different from the one that is in the United States, which will be different from the one that's in Sweden. Let's wrap this with a real and recent example. The real problem in the pandemic has been disruption in the supply chain. Many car companies had to shut down their factories or close it for several days due to supply chain issues. Architecting the supply chain could help companies understand and reduce the risk for future disruptions. Today's companies operate in a complex and uncertain environment with changing competitors, changing technology, changing regulations, changing work cultures, and changing customer needs. With this captured as part of the architecture, leaders of organization with shared mental models will be in a better position to transform their organization and to help navigate it to adapt and flourish. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. For a one-page visual summary of this video, please sign up on my website. Thank you deeply for giving me the motivation to do what I do.